want it. You, go ahead. Someone has to give her a straight answer. Uh, yeah. Hook, hook man freaked me out when I was a kid. The killer with the hook. All the different stories of the killer with the hook. Of, uh, you know, the, the, the aren't, you glad, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? I thought was really cool. And there's uh, the licked hand. Have you ever heard the licked hand, which is a really cool one? And, um, so, like, that, that was always, you know, really sort of, sort of freaky for me. Okay. Let's take two more questions. Um, we'll get this one down here. And uh, there's one all the way in the back, right, right next to you. Right. Go ahead. Um, in the pilot, we know that uh, when Sam wanted to go to college, John told him to get lost. And um, he's in his, presumably his fourth year, because he's interviewing for law school. Um, but he says that he hasn't talked to Dean in two years. Is there an answer to what happened two years ago? <laughs> uh, you mean, is that I actually, Eric? I have an answer to that. <laughs> Well, you know, I know you're supposed to, you know, do what Scheiben does, which is kind of go, you'll find out. <laughs> but the uh, fact of the matter was, is, uh, it, it, you know, these things happen so fast and furious, and, you're, and, and, and that it, it was actually a, a mistake. Um, we we uh, wanted, it, Jared is, or Sam's character is supposed to be a junior in college and starting the interviewing process for, uh, the interviewing process for law school. And uh, so hasn't seen him since he let, so he spent his freshman year and his sophomore year away from Dean and hasn't seen Dean. Then this is beginning of junior year. This is fall of junior year. So it's been technically two years as he's beginning the process. But because I think, because what happened, you know, you guys, you know, the, the, you know on, on, online, like sort of putting it all, because what happened 22 years ago, he, he was slightly older than a junior should be, so no one sort of bought that he was a junior, and so there was a lot of discussion of these two lost years, and, just, and I just like, hee hee, like, just a mistake. There you go. Yeah, you know. But hold on, let me give the real answer. You'll find out. <laughs> now you're talking. Okay. In the back. Are there any stories about uh, the show being too scary like you do trade-offs with the network like they say well you can have two seconds of this you know bloody face if you do this or that yeah yeah we've run into a few a few times that season this season haven't we? Oh, not, the, 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 uh, nightmare was the first time oh right yeah yeah i mean you get into really strange dis discussions of um can we not see the decapitated decapitated head roll <laughs> <laughs> and then you start arguing about well can you do a half a turn? <laughs> say, okay, you can do a half a turn, but the blood gush can't be for two seconds. It has to be for one second. Um, so those are ongoing discussions. But I, I, actually, the network's been great. We really pushed the envelope yeah. in, in every sense. And uh, they let us get away with more than I thought they would. That was also in the, uh, when... The gun rig. Yeah, the gun rig with me. When yeah, I, when, the, uh, ni nightmare. The the episode Nightmare was the, the first and only time we've ever had issues with standards and practices. And so everything else, they just were like, give us more. And we, again, we were shocked by that. But the, 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 there's a scene where it's a, it's a vision. It doesn't really happen, but where Dean gets his brains blown out in Nightmare. And, and, <laughs> and we actually rigged it. And we thought, like, you know, we rigged it so... Yeah, the rig was awesome. Yeah, you, you, you rigged it so the shot actually goes into his forehead and, and the blood explodes out the back <laughs> under the wall. And we were like, ha ha, this is our lead. And we're just, you know. But, and, and, and Network was like, no yeah, way. Yeah, this giant, this giant backpack filled with, like, grapes and, and corn syrup. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was this tube just kind of coming right, right out of the back and uh, from the head on. And I had a little button in my hand. And they just yelled action. And we timed it with a gunshot. And I hit the button. And... Gave a reaction and the whole wall went splat. You know? yeah. <laughs> By was, the way, it was an awesome rig, but then they ended up having to cut to just the splat and then back to me. Back with to him with the hole. Yeah. But the uh, the director of that episode is here tonight, sitting next to my wife as it is. Phil Segrisha. Stand up. Oh, really stand, up. Job. Oh, stand up. And uh, when I looked at those dailies uh, and I called Phil and I said, uh, he said, how are they? How are they? Is, you know, because... Kim can tell you, all those directors are so self-confident that we don't need constant approval or anything. Um, and he said, I said, they're great, Phil, but what the hell are you doing? And he said, well, you know, they'll look at that and they'll give me all the rest of the stuff. So. <laughs>
<laughs> we actually play a game with BSP broad, broadcast standards and practice where we cut the show and we cut it way too violent. So then they come in and they go, "Well, you have to take out four frames of that shot," and you go, "Oh God, not four frames." Yes, four frames. So you take it out, but you always knew that you didn't need those four frames. So we kind of stacked the deck. Nice. Okay, there's a question over there in the corner, and there's one back there. Over there, too. Oh, okay. Um, well, we've had the question about what urban myths scare you, but for those of you who are actually on set regularly, has there ever been, you know, a blood splatter or that freaky scarecrow or anything that just really creeped you out just to be around on set, even though you knew it was plastic or, you know, caro syrup or something? I know one, and just one time randomly, we were, uh, we were filming Skin, the episode where he's a shapeshifter, and we were inside this house. It's Brilliant house, yeah, that was a great episode. And um, we were inside this house, and just this clock on the wall just up and leaned over and fell off. Just this round clock, no one was near it, no one was hammering on the wall outside. It just kind of fell off, and everybody sort of looked around. But instead of kind of going, who did that? We were all just were like, ignore it and go back doing it. <laughs> just tried, decided to not look into it any further, the way real brave people do it. And just, yeah. <laughs> So. The, um, the show Asylum uh, was, oh, yeah, um, yeah. That, was, that was shot in an actual abandoned uh, mental institute. And so uh, the, the halls and the rooms and, and were all very used at one point. And, and uh, you know, it said that, that the crew says not to go up to the fourth floor and then... <laughs> You know, don't, and, and I remember we broke for lunch and uh, I thought I'd be, you know, clever and take a shortcut. <laughs> I, I came down a stairwell and went into to one door and it was just a long, dark hallway because the, there's no <laughs> lights on. The only lights on are what the, the film crew puts out. And uh, it, I was like, well, it's not that long. <laughs> I can make it. That freaked me out. Dean White Winchester, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> Afraid of nothing. In the back over there. Yeah. Now that there's a new network that you're probably going to be moving to, the CW, are they going to loosen up and give us a little more NC-17 like we got the Jensen storyline the other week? Bob? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> What? Sex. Oh, right. Uh, how can I forget? <laughs> Thank you for that, man. Sure. <laughs> Happy birthday, Chase. Yes. Happy <laughs> um, birthday. You know, I mean, CW is huge on full frontal male nudity, so... <laughs> well, uh, I think there's a lot in store. Stay tuned. <laughs> you know, I mean, we'll give them, you know, we'll give them love interests and uh, love stories as it's appropriate. <laughs> We're gonna need it. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, we'll take one there and one in the middle. Oh, jeez. One down here and one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. You just. Hi. Um, first of all, thanks so much for being here. Um, if you guys are always like this, can I come work on your set? <laughs> yeah. Um, thank y'all guys for being here. This yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Um, so we came into this story uh, when the boys are already adults, and I know there's a lot to explore in the future, but I was wondering about the past, um, because I know that there's a lot of speculation about what their childhood was like growing up, um, moving around, how much Miller time dad was doing, and mm -hmm. how Sam and Jess met, stuff like that. So I was just wondering um, if you were going to explore that aspect of their lives. We just, uh, it's funny you say that, we just yesterday... Uh, actually, I think uh, I'm talking to Brett, who's at the network. I think you're getting a cut on Monday. Um, uh, uh, of an episode that uh, not only do the boys in, in present day you know, deal with a creature, but uh, it's a creature they dealt with in the past, and there's extensive flashbacks to uh, uh, Sam and Dean and John as, they're, you know, as the boys